doing timing builds on one of these. This is the old school single overhead cam, uh, 2.2. This would be the same on a 1.8 as well. So this would be the engines from like 1990 to about 99, 98, 99. Um, after that, they are still single overhead cam, but they changed the design of the heads. So it, it's gonna look a little different. Um, so on the crankshaft, you want this little timing mark lined up with this little indent here on the oil pump. And then for the two cams, you want this little mark here lined up with this little notch on the rear cover. And this one can be kind of tricky to get it to sit just right. And there is also an arrow that's in here that can be deceiving. You might think you want to line that up, ignore the arrow. You don't want to use that little arrow. You just want these marks basically right at 12 o'clock. You want all three of these to be at the 12 o'clock position. And that's kind of hard to see, but that's the other little mark. And you want to line that up right there. And I always get to the crank shaft into the 12 o'clock position here first before doing your two cans. Um, the 2.2 like this, it's non-interference, so you don't ever have to worry about the valves hitting the pistons. <clears throat> but on dual overhead cam cars, that can be a um, something that can happen. Same with the newer single overhead cams. The valves can hit the pistons, but one thing to always remember is that if you have the um, crank in this 12 o'clock position here lined up for this little mark, all the pistons are at like the halfway point in the cylinders. So they're all gonna be far away from the valve. So if you screw up in one of these slips or you spin it backwards or whatever, you don't have to worry about the valves hitting the pistons because they're all gonna be pulled about halfway in the cylinders. So there's no concern to them hitting as long as you get this mark lined up first. Is this a non-interference engine though? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, these it, old. It shouldn't. Be so it shouldn't matter on. Valves, but I guess it's just good. But, but just good practice, just good thing to note. Um, that, yeah, if you were working on a WRX or something where that would be a possibility, as long as you have the crank mark lined up, that means all your pistons are at a, pulled into about the halfway point in the stroke. So they're plenty far away from the valves. So yeah, something to be aware of. And on all, all these engines, all the EJ engines, always use this little, the little marks <clears throat> on the uh, cams here. Uh, don't worry about any sort of arrows. Um, there's also on your crank, um, gear here, there is, this one's a little dirty, but sometime maybe, I don't know, there it is, that little tiny thing, looks like an arrow, ignore that as well, um, it's not for timing when you're putting a new belt on. So once you've gotten the belt on to this point, um, the most difficult pulley I always find to install is this toothed one that goes right down here next to the water pump. Um, I always leave this lower pulley off till the end because you need as much slack in the belt as you can get to get this one lined up in here. It's Always a very tight fit to get this lined up in there and not have any of your other pulleys slip or move on you. And sometimes I've had to get in here with a screwdriver or something and wedge in here against the oil pump. I want to make sure you get at least a few turns on this bolt that you don't cross-thread it. So if 
before you try and crank it down. And then once that one's in, there's generally enough slack that it's not that hard to get this one lined up afterwards. If you try to put this one in first and do this last, it'll just make things far more difficult for you. There, and that's about all there is to it. It's installing the belt and then you can pull the grenade pin here. Um, I like to leave these bolts here loose slightly until I'm completely done and get behind this tensioner because these bolt holes are slotted. Slide it forward as far as it'll go and then snug these down. And then pull the pin. I'll ensure you have as much tension as possible on this tensioner pulley so that the belt won't end up skipping on you. And that's about all there is to it with installing the belt. Also recommend grabbing a pair of these. Um, makes it much easier to hold the belt. Um, there is some sort of special tool they sell for this, but these are like two bucks at, Harp, at uh, Home Depot. So much cheaper and works just the same. Once you've gotten belt installed and all your covers on, the last things you're going to be putting on is your um, crank pulley. Uh, one thing to always be careful of is make sure that you have the keyway here lined up with the little key on the pulley. And this can be hard to tell if you're really lined up in there because it is a tight fit. Um, but make sure it's fully seated flat and in that keyway before you go and put the bolt in here and torque it down. I have pulled a number of these crank pulleys off that were out of balance and loose and kind of all over the place where someone just slid it on thinking they had it lined up right and were not and then they cranked it down crushing the key in there and in the process screwing the pulley up too. Um, and if you do that, you cause yourself a whole big pain in the ass process of having to pull this pulley off. You usually have to replace it. Um, usually you have to replace the uh, crank pulley for the timing belt as well. That usually gets ruined. <clears throat> Hammer the old key out and put a new one in your crankshaft, assuming you haven't also screwed up the tip of your crankshaft either. Um, that can sometimes happen as well. So something to always really watch out for, make sure you got it fully seated and in the keyway before you go and torque this bolt down. And uh, also the torque on this bolt is 135 pounds. Um, so make sure that is torqued down properly, um, having this back out can you know, cause this pulley to start to come loose. And if this pulley starts slopping around in there, it can also <clears throat> destroy that keyway as well. It starts to come loose. So definitely something else to 